uh, tell us a little bit about Nero. I heard you have him play a, quite an extensive role in the, in the film. You know, I keep hearing the same thing. <laughs> uh, Nero is a very complicated and complex individual. He is, uh, you know, deviously intelligent, right? He, at the beginning of the movie, we find him with Garad, and they're working on their secret mission to uh, eliminate the beautiful but deadly goddess named Athena. And uh, yeah, we find him at the beginning of the movie, and there's not too much, there's not too much that we can reveal about him at the beginning. But in the third act, we're gonna see how how dirty Nero is willing to play to get what he wants. I'm really curious. Did, did you grow up liking anime, watching anime? Is that is that one of your genres that you enjoy? Absolutely. I mean, I grew up in a Latin household, and you know, I think I can speak for most of us when I say that we grew up with Dragon Ball Z. I mean, that was every every afternoon on Cartoon Network right and uh, yeah anime played a significant part in my life it had a lot of impact and a lot of weight in my life just as I know it had a lot of weight and impact on many others life uh, these characters are more than just characters they're more than just entertainment right each of them has a story a struggle they all carry uh, a message whether it be inspiring whether we learn from it they all carry something of value so yeah man I, I grew up with Dragon Ball Z and some other stuff, and uh, but Dragon Ball Z is like the main yeah, one, yeah. right? Yeah, I think that was the main one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel as a as a Latino, you know, now being able to yeah. uh, as an actor portray something yeah. that's so beloved in, in the anime and manga community? Yeah, it's it's such an honor and such a privilege, man. It's such a it's such a surreal thing, right? Uh, I remember uh, when the project first got brought to us. You know, I asked my family back home in Mexico and Ecuador. I'm like, have you guys heard of this anime? Like. Should I do it? Like, what do you guys think? And they're like, idiota. Si no lo haces, ya no eres mi primo, man. Like, you got to do it, man. Like, come on. It's the Phoenix Knight and Knights of the Zodiac. Lo tienes que hacer. Um, so, man, being able to represent all my Latinos in this industry, you know, coming from immigrant parents, my father coming from Morelia, Michoacán, Mexico. My mother coming from Quito, Ecuador. I mean, brother, I've, I've seen them struggle. I've seen their own journey. And they, they made it so far, right? And now they passed over the torch, and now it's now it's my time, right? I'm gonna take over for my parents. I'm gonna lead the, you know, la, nuestra gente, my bloodline, and I'm gonna keep going, and then and I'm gonna pass that torch on to my kids. And I think that's what we gotta do, you know, as Latinos, we gotta keep doing that. We gotta think beyond just ourselves. We have to think para para los niños, for our kids, for for the next generation, right? And we gotta we gotta guide them on the right path. So hopefully this movie does that. Hopefully by Latino kids seeing my face on a movie screen, they're going to be like, damn, he did that? I could be a doctor. I could be a lawyer. I mean, if he's being a superhero, I could probably be, you know, a lawyer or a doctor, have my own negocio, you know, and uh, I mean, that's the message I want to put out there and, and I'll always encourage kids to uh, follow their path and stay motivated, stay on the right track and, uh, and chase their dream. With, with you growing up with, with watching shows like Dragon Ball, how do you feel that of this live action version, uh, honors kind of the animated one because sometimes animation is able to exaggerate certain features absolutely certain actions yeah, yeah. Um, how do you feel this one does, does? I, I thought we did a great job we changed some things up obviously like um, I think in the original Los Caballeros de Zodiaco there's like the cube right and it comes out and that's how the, the characters get their cloth uh, we did things a little bit differently in this film um, but there's some certain things that you have to kind of adjust you kind of have to tweak a little bit to, to give honor to the movie and to give honor to the whole, to the to the manga, to the anime, and uh, yeah, there there's some things we had to uh, tweak a tiny bit, but not too much, not too much. I and mean, we changed Iki to Nero, but you know what I mean. Both names are pretty badass, so I'm not too uh, disappointed about that. What do you think makes Knights of Zodiac unique from other animes? Oh man, I mean, we got we got Makenyu, a Japanese star, right? He's representing he's representing Seiya. He's representing Japanese, not only just himself and, and this iconic character, but he's representing, like I'm representing Latinos, he's representing Japanese kids, man. Like, I, I haven't seen too many Japanese superheroes in, in today's day and age. I mean, not not too many, right? I, I liked uh, Shang-Chi, but I don't believe that that was Japanese, was it? It was no, Chinese. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, I can't think of any Japanese superheroes. Can you? I mean, there's a lot of series, there's a lot of groups, but yeah. just particular yeah. heroes, not, not... Not entirely. Not at the top of my head either. Um, so, so yeah, man, that's that's going to be a, a huge impact with this movie. Kids are going to be able to see that. They're going to be able to relate to it. And again, feel empowered, feel seen, feel heard. 
And uh, on top of that, I mean, we got a pretty cool cast, you know. We got Sean Bean, King in the North, Famke, just, uh, Famke Janssen, um, X-Men, Jean Grey, uh, Madison Eisman, Jumanji, McKenyu, big Japanese superstar, uh, Mark DeCascos, big star, obviously, right? And, uh, and then, of course, myself, you know, the kid from the block. So, um, yeah, man, our, our cast, you know, the writing was very great. It tells a compelling story with a good message. And overall, man, I, I like inspiring messages. Those are the types of movies I want to do. Those are the types of projects I want to be involved in. And if, it, if you can leave the movie with, a, with something impactful that benefits you in a positive way, then I think we did our job. And hopefully, you know, that's up to the audience. So May 12th, go check it out. Let us know. <laughs> did you have a lot of fight scenes in the film? And if so, what was it like working with the stunt coordinator? Because it comes from a really, really uh, good background. Yeah, absolutely. So working with Andy Chang, man, that guy is a legend, right? Rush Hour 1, Rush Hour 2 with Jackie Chan, uh, Marvel's Shang-Chi again. Uh, so yeah, he was no, uh, he was no rookie. He, he, he knew what he was doing. And, uh, you know, he prepped us. And luckily, you know, we kind of walked into it not knowing what to expect. But then once he started guiding us, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, this is possible. I, I can do this, right? When I'm flying 20 feet in the air, like, I'm not going to, like, you know, flip upside down. Like, okay, I trust you guys. And that's really what's needed, you know, trust with your choreographers as a team. That's what makes or breaks a film. And, uh, yeah, Andy, Andy's a legend. I had some fight scenes in there that he prepped me on. Uh, not as much as McKenyu. McKenyu was, like, fighting the whole movie, crushing it. I mean, McKenyu's such a, man, such an action star, right? Um, his, his fight choreographies are like some of my favorites, especially the intro. Um, but yeah, I had some good stuff in there in the third act that I can't say too much about, but you guys are going to see. We look forward to seeing you. Thank, Thank you, so brother. I appreciate nice it, man. Very nice to meet you, sir.